Hey guys, today is May 23rd, 2020, and this is the Flight Sim News. So, great news for the Memorial Day weekend. The guys over at IL-2 Great Battles is having a sale on the Battle of Badenplatt. Now, they just did have a big sale on all their uh, Great Battles series stuff that was 75% off, and it seemed to have ended for about a week. But I just noticed the other day, as soon as I posted uh, my 4.006 update video, and then after that, uh, yesterday, I had posted a video of the first mission of the P-38 Lightning Strikes campaign, which is free if you have the P-38 Lightning and the bottle of, uh, Battle of Badenplatt. Um, now you can get the Battle of Badenplatt Standard Edition for $12.49 or the Premium Edition for $19.99. I would highly recommend getting the premium edition because with that you get the two collector's planes. And the collector's planes are the P-38J-25 and the Focke-Wulf 190D-9, the Dora. Um, those two planes are fantastic. Uh, if you look through my uh, video library, you'll find that I did a, a really cool comparison of the Focke Wolf 190 D9 Dora with the Dora that's in DCS world and uh, I believe there's also a video of the P38 standalone as well whenever I did get the Battle of Bodmin Platt to begin with if you want to see those um, but $19.99 a $20 bill for the Battle of Bodmin Platt plus now you can download that free campaign Actually, no, I take that back. You don't have to download the campaign. You have to download the free skins that um, can be used with the campaign. I stand corrected. Um, the campaign will come free. Um, and the 4.006 update just happened the other day where they changed the uh, rendering to deferred shading rendering. And it's fantastic, man. It just looks so good. It plays so awesome. And again, IL-2 Great Battles is the best flight sim that you can get in VR at the moment. Uh, it's absolutely amazing and it's so much fun. Uh, again, I can't recommend it enough. Definitely go check that out. A $20 bill, it's a steal. And just those two planes, if you only got those two planes and the stuff that came with Battle of Bottom Platt, you would be ahead of the game, you know, for that price. Fantastic stuff. All right, the guys over at the Fighter Pilot Podcast have posted their latest episode, and it is on the MiG-21 fish bed. Uh, if you haven't ever heard the Fighter Pilot Podcast, I highly recommend it. It is such good stuff. You know, the, the, the host over there, Jello, um, man such good stuff. Uh, there are days I have to drive to places for my day job where I've got like an hour or an hour and a half there and back and uh, I'll throw that on stream and Bluetooth it to the vehicle and I can't recommend it enough man it's just fantastic. I'll throw a link to this in the video description as usual so you could check it out for yourself. And in other MiG-21 DCS related news, the guys over at Leatherneck Simulations have made a rather lengthy update on their products. So basically they go into detail and mention that uh, they're working on an update for the MiG-21 and it says that they've, uh, since the beginning of the year, they've been focusing on updating the MiG-21 biz code. Um, and a lot of the things they're talking about doing is resolving the weapon selector knob causing DCS to crash, uh, fixed high angles of attack bug, improved wing stall characteristics, uh, tuned aileron efficiency at high angles of attack, rudder and elevator characteristics tuned, uh, trimmer speed tuned, suspension model approved that will enable takeoff and landing on some grass surfaces, uh, ASP gun sight fixed net and proper illumination levels corrected for day and night operations. Radio altimeter hot start value was decreased from 200 to 100 meters. Uh, landing gear lock sound fixed and SAU and autopilot tuning. Uh, they go on to mention that some of these updates were added today, which was the other day when they released the uh, open beta update for DCS that also included support for the supercarrier. Uh, but they go on to say basically a lot of this stuff is going to be coming soon as well. 
Um, in addition to that, there's a cool video you can check out. Um, and then for their second released module, the Kristen Eagle 2, they've produced a sizable package of improvements. Uh, our primary concern was the flight model. The following is a list of intended changes. And I believe some of these are in the update that just happened the other day in the open beta, but some of these are still forthcoming. Now, here's the cool part. F4U1D Corsair. Uh, our development of the F4U1D Corsair continues. After VFAT, there was an extensive improvement to the Airframe's 3D model, where at the same time adding the final elements of the onboard equipment within the cockpit. Recently, our coder has implemented the radio equipment, which we have described is one of the, in one of the previous updates. Within the limits of the DCS world environment, we took an effort to implement the YEZB radio navigation system used by the U.S. aircraft during World War II as a means to navigate to the desired aircraft carrier and later to airfields. And then there are some 3D renderings of what they got going on there. Uh, they also mention an Essex-class aircraft carrier and other assets, and this is kind of interesting. So, as we mentioned months ago, our intention was to deliver the F4 Year 1D not only as a module, but as an entire package containing a few more features, including an aircraft carrier and AI units. Ooh, so it's going to be more like a World War II assets pack in addition to the plane. Exact contents are not yet decided, and they depend on many things, but apart from the Essex class aircraft carrier, we've been working on some ground units to build a very basic environment for the F4U1D. A variety of such assets include Japanese Type 89, Type 95, and Type 97 tanks, Type 94 truck, and the 25mm Type 96 gun, 75mm Type 88 cannons. A complete package of contents will be disclosed closer to the release date. That sounds kick-ass. So they're going to have a carrier, which we kind of expected the whole time. But I like that they're adding all of these objects. So, you know, as much as I love IL-2, I do appreciate the World War II environment in DCS as well. And uh, I'm just always ever so hopeful that they continue to improve the Warbird World War II environment in DCS. Because it is fun, too. Uh, it's just a matter of performance, and then they got to fix their damage model for all the planes. Uh, other than that, it's kind of chugging along. They're, they're, they are adding things little by little, and I cannot say that they aren't trying, you know what I mean, to create a better World War II environment for us. The Vault Aeronautics F-8J Crusader. They are still working on this. Similarly, as the Corsair module, another Volt creation is a few steps closer to release. The work on a proper flight model and texturing it for it has begun, while at the same time, possession of the simplified model allows us to begin basic coding. We've managed to successfully go through initial implementation comprised of code files, allowing us to operate the aircraft both as an AI unit and as player controlled. Currently, we're focusing on adding more functionalities and improving aircraft integration into the DCS world environment. This is the one I'm really looking for. I think the Crusader and the Corsair are two planes out of the third-party modules that I really, really look forward to seeing in DCS world, especially the Crusader. I really have a thing for a lot of those Cold War planes that we just don't have. Um, I think it's going to be very cool, and maybe eventually we'll have that Vietnam environment that we've been looking for. I'll throw a link to this in the video description so you can check it out for yourself. So as you know, earlier this week the update 4.006 uh, hit IL-2, and I'm, I'm going to include this link so you can check it out for yourself, but it is rather extensive in terms of all the 87 features, I think. Yes, 87 features that were added within this update. In addition, there was a hot fix, and I don't have any information yet on what that hot fix included that came after this. Um, I haven't updated my IL-2 or flown it for a couple days since I did my uh, 4.006 update because work has been quite busy. But I plan to do that this weekend and dig into it a little bit more and uh, put together some more videos on it. But until then, you can find the complete extensive list of everything that this update includes uh, in the link 
in the video description as usual. All right, everybody knows by now that the open beta has been released, which also introduced the supercarrier module. And it's a pretty big, extensive uh, update, and there's a ton of stuff in here. So um, they did a lot of stuff to the World War II assets pack. They updated the cockpit model in the Mirage. Even the AV-8B Harrier ended up with a variety of updates, one of which was the Sidewinder Seam Mode is enabled. That's something I'm going to have to check out. Uh, the Avio Jet got a lot of love. The JF-17 by DECA Ironworks Simulations got a whole lot of love. That's a big update. Uh, even the Vigan ended up with a few fixes. Um, Heat Blur added a variety of things to the uh, Tomcat which is pretty cool. A lot of which are things that were needed to work with the supercarrier. Uh, one of the things I, I heard and I haven't tried yet is that the AIM 7s are messed up a little bit at the moment uh, with this latest update. So if you're having problems using the AIM 7s, uh, I'd imagine there's going to be a, either a hot fix or it'll be addressed in one of the next updates for DCS, but it's a rather extensive list of tweaks and features for the Tomcat. And I'm dying now to see the F-14A. Uh, hopefully that's going to be coming pretty soon. Uh, the Hornet ended up getting lightning pod updates. Uh, and a variety of fixes and features as well. And they are still working on that air-to-ground radar, which sounds pretty cool. Uh, F-16 got a little bit of love. The Albatross had some fixed training missions. Uh, the MI-8 has a few updates. Uh, there was an issue with cockpit illumination that has been tuned a little bit. Uh, spring tension, no progress on mission 11 fixed. Uh, Focke-Wulf 190, D9, and A8 corrected the instrument lighting in the cockpit. Uh, Huey, UN pilot campaign player and wingman spawn in one place has been fixed. Uh, DCS F5E, the color of the reticle has been lightened. The color of the radar indication has been lightened. Corrected the cockpit lighting. Mustang, cut electrical lights on damage. Piston engine sound dropped has been fixed. SU-33, if the player on the 33 requests repair on the deck, his plane should be moved to a free parking space. That's interesting. Um, it looks like a lot of things have ended up with this cut electrical lights on damage. So they've done some tweaking to the damage because it, it affects the Sabre, the 109, and one of these other ones up here. Black Shark 2 added the mirrors toggles commands. Looks like they've tweaked some of the um, campaign missions. And the A10 text above G meter backlight has been fixed, and they've corrected some single player missions. Uh, combined arms, they've got a few things they've fixed in there. And campaigns looks like they've gotten uh, a variety of tweaks and fixes. And speaking of which, over at Reflected Simulations, uh, he's made a few posts, one of which is uh, he's excited because the supercarrier is released, and he goes on to mention, my Fear the Bones campaign got one step closer to completion. The immersion factor provided by the supercarrier brings the campaign to a whole new level. Uh, all that's missing now is the release of the F-14A model. It's going to be epic. One of the, I can't remember where I saw it, but I think he mentioned there's going to be a version of this campaign that still uses one of the older carriers, too, like the Stennis, I think. Man, I wish I could find that. I just saw that the other day, too. But this is going to be kick-ass, and I'm dying for the F-14A just to see what this dude's campaign ends up looking like. Uh, he also goes on to mention, Dear friends, with today's open beta patch comes a major update to my campa campaigns as well. He's updated all of his World War II campaigns with the new World War II assets released last month. You'll meet JU-88s, A-20s, bomb V-1 sites, U-boats, and more. 
On top of this, due to the severe FPS drop brought by 2.5.6, I fine-tuned the heavier mission's performance. If you use the remove options, remove units option after spawn, you'll face an face escort as few as 24 bombers instead of 72. Uh, that number has to run smoothly on any PC, even if you have an outdated one like me. And uh, he goes in to show a bunch of screenshots of some of his campaign action in action. Pretty cool stuff. I'll throw a link to his Facebook page so you can check it out for yourself. And you really should follow him. The dude's got a lot of great updates. I'm going to have to try some of these out. So the guys over at True Grit Virtual Technologies have posted a few more exciting screenshots of the Eurofighter 2000 Typhoon, and uh, one of which is a really interesting looking missile. Um, is this the Meteor missile that I've heard so much about? Uh, a few people have pointed out that they believe this is the Meteor. Um, and I remember listening to, I think it was the Fighter Pilot podcast on the Eurofighter 2000. And the dude was talking about this thing. And the Meteor missile just sounds like the I win button. You know, it's just pretty kick ass. I want to say it, it sounded like a, a combination of an AIM 9X mixed with an AIM 120. Uh, pretty crazy missile and uh, pretty powerful. So that's pretty exciting. You know, and the more I think about this, when you add a fighter like the Eurofighter to DCS, like, you know, I've heard a lot of people talk about, well, you know, they would never add an F-22 or F-35. It would so imbalance everything. And I'm like, you're right. These next-gen fighters, man, would just totally decimate the majority of, you know, stuff that we have in DCS today. Um, and something like the Eurofighter, if this thing is implemented the way I think it's going to be, it's going to be the I win button when it comes to DCS world. It's just going to be crazy awesome. But they have a few more images that they posted on their Instagram page of the new Eurofighter 2000 Typhoon in action. I'll be sure to post a link to this in the uh, video description as usual. In other IL2 news, the Stormbirds podcast has a new episode. And uh, the episode is a Q&A with Jason Williams, the producer of the IL-2 Great Battles series. Uh, fantastic stuff. So, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to episode two of the Stormbirds podcast. Uh, on this episode, I have uh, with me uh, Jason Williams, uh, who is the lead producer for the IL-2 Great Battles series. Welcome, Jason. Hi, Colin. How you doing, bud? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, excited to... Uh, Talk about past, present, and future of Flight Sims and uh, the IL-2 series. Uh, so this is pretty long. It's about an hour and 17 minutes. I will post happen. a link. I will post a link to this in the uh, video description as usual, so you can go check it out for yourself. But it's definitely a good listen, and it goes into detail about what's going on at the moment with the Great Battles series and what's to come. All right, guys, last but not least, Meteor is the band that put together the album that comes with Heat Blur's Tomcat called uh, Defender of the Fleet, and it's absolutely fantastic music. Um, I liked it so much because before the Tomcat came out, they had posted a video that had that music in there, and I went over to the Bandcamp website, and uh, you can still get it if you don't own the Tomcat module, for like a dollar if you wanted to. Pay what you want, basically, for the uh, Defender of the Fleet um, album. And I had even purchased that before I even got my hands on the Tomcat module because it was that good. And these guys, they're leading the way in this whole, I guess, synth wave genre of music. It is very 80s-esque. It, it, it's heavy on synthesizer keyboards and uh, guitar uh, riffs in, in 80s style. It's very cool stuff, and, and it really reminds me of like 80s action movie soundtracks, you know? Check it out for yourself. Um, but I've worked with these guys, and they've given me five copies of the uh, new album, which is called System Failure. And in addition to that, Heat Blur has provided me with five copies of the Tomcat module to give away as well. So what I'm doing 
is I've provided a link in the video that takes you over to the Wargame Guru blog slash website and I've created a giveaway there. Um, if you click that link and head over to the Wargame Guru site, you'll find the link on the main page there. Click that, do what it tells you, and you'll be entered for your chance to win uh, a Tomcat module for DCS and another winner will get a copy of the new album from Meteor, System Failure. Uh, this is the first of many. Uh, this is, I'm, I'm kind of figuring it out with this whole Gleam thing and setting up the giveaways and whatnot. So I'm using that to start with and uh, this one's going to run for one week and at the end of the one week I will pick one winner for a Tomcat module and one winner for the uh, Meteor album. After that, seeing how well that goes, uh, I may end up going with the uh, Gleam uh, competition software to do the rest of the giveaways, or I might do something else. But the cool part is Heatbler was kind enough to provide modules of the Tomcat, and Meteor was kind enough to provide system failure album copies, uh, which you'll have to... Uh, go over to the Bandcamp website and redeem. But um, that's it for the Flight Sim news today, guys. But I'm really excited about the giveaway. And uh, all I ask is that you guys please subscribe to the channel and jump in there and give me some comments, guys. Let's get this going a little bit. Uh, again, I've got a few more copies to give away after this, but I want to get this going and, and see how well it goes for everybody. But um, I'm really excited about it, and I hope you are too. So as always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Feel free to hit that like button. And until next time.